Singapore is known to be one of the best cities in the world for a layover. It's modern, it's clean, it's safe, and most importantly, it has an amazing food scene. So, if you're flying through Singapore, my advice is to take full advantage of that layover, book yourself a hotel, and drop your bags because I'm gonna give you my guide on how to do a layover in Singapore. Located just off the southern tip of Malaysia, Singapore is a small island country that's made a big name for itself. Its location, compact size, and an airport designed for layovers makes Singapore an attractive layover destination for long-haul travelers. While 24 to 48 hours is a tight squeeze to explore what this amazing city has to offer, you can still cover a lot of ground, so let's get to it. Stretch out your legs, you've made it to Singapore. After that long flight, you're walking through the airport and notice this is no ordinary airport. Rated the best airport in the world, Singapore Changi Airport's efficiency is unparalleled, which makes getting through the airport a breeze. The airport's goal is to get passengers out of the plane to exiting the airport in 30 minutes or less. Now, that is impressive. This airport also has some seriously cool stuff like the world's tallest indoor waterfall, butterfly garden, an IMAX movie theater, tons of good food, the list goes on. I know you're seeing all this and now tempted to stay at the airport, but we do have a new city to see. So grab your bags and hop in a taxi or the airport shuttle to your hotel. There's a big debate on which area to stay in Singapore, Orchard Road or Marina Bay. While both have their perks, for a first-timer, I prefer Marina Bay because most of the major spots you want to hit will be close by and the Metro MRT makes it incredibly easy to get around. Now for where to stay. My pick is Conrad Centennial Singapore for their stylish rooms, executive lounge, and fantastic breakfast. If you watch my video on Seoul, you would know that I'm already a big fan of Conrad Hotels and I've teamed up with Conrad again to sort you out on your trip to Singapore. Book yourself an executive room with bay views to enjoy access to the executive lounge on level 31. Probably the best part about staying at Conrad Centennial Singapore is for its location. The MRT is less than a two minute walk away and only one stop from Marina Bay, which now leads me on how to get around. I think the best way to explore Singapore is via public transport. As you would expect, the public transport system is clean, efficient, safe, and an easy way to hit up all the major places that you'll wanna see. You'll need to get yourself an easy link card. You can get these at most MRT stations and convenience stores. The cost for the card itself is 10 Singapore dollars. That also doesn't come with any travel credit, but what you can do is just hold on to this for your next visit and top up as needed. So, you've made it to Singapore and you're wondering where your first meal should be. Well, without a doubt, it has to be at a Hawker Center, which is a food court with a bunch of food stalls that specialize in one to two dishes. The best part about eating in these type of places is one, that you get to try a lot of local cuisine, two, the food is good, and three, probably the most important, it's cheap. And today we're at Maxwell Food Center and we're gonna be ordering chicken rice, which is Singapore's national dish. The question of where to get the best chicken rice, well, that's really relative on who you ask in Singapore. Everyone's gonna have their own opinion, but today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be trying the most famous. We're gonna be trying Tan Tens, which specializes in chicken rice. This place is on all the food guides. Even Anthony Bourdain did a segment on this place back in the day, and it's Sunday lunchtime. There is a lineup around the corner of the block, so we're gonna have to wait in line, guys, but I'm really excited to eat. So that lineup actually wasn't that bad. That took about like 15 minutes. So I am super, super hungry, guys. This looks awesome. So something to know about chicken rice is that the actual star of the dish is the rice. Yes, the chicken is important, but actually the rice is the hero part of the dish. The rice has been cooked in the juices of the chicken with ginger and garlic, and it's meant to be fragrant and delicious. And then also another star of the dish is the chili sauce. So they say the proper way to eat chicken rice is that you taste the rice first. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna taste the rice first. So here we go. And then it also has a little bit of extra juice on top. There is no way that you couldn't like this. It's like rice cooked in chicken broth and with a bit of chicken fat. Oh, it's so comforting. It's kind of like chicken noodle soup, but in a rice version. Mm. 
Let's try the chicken with the rice. That chili has a kick to it. I mean, I can handle spicy food, but that that definitely has a kick. Guys, this dish cost me six Singapore dollars. In Australia, I paid like $25 for a salad. Definitely, you gotta seek this dish out. Another dish that you need to get when you come to Singapore is laksa, which is a coconut-based spicy soup and I'm at Sunai Road and this place is so famous and this looks so bomb. So I was standing in line and an old man was telling me the story about this place. Back in the day it used to be a roadside stall and they used to sell it for a dollar on the side of the road and then now it's four Singapore dollars and still I think this is a steal for one of the best meals that you can get in Singapore. So let's Try it out, I haven't even tasted it. So they only give you a spoon, they said no chopsticks. So I'm gonna try a bit of the broth first. Mm. Yum. It's not as sweet as a Malaysian um, laksa. It's kind of more, has like a brothy base. And I'm gonna try to eat it with some of the noodles. Mm. Yum. So what they do is they cut up the noodles so they're already kind of ready for you to eat. And then we have some sambal here. And I like my spice, guys, so I'm just gonna mix in my sambal. My favorite thing about Singapore, everything comes with sambal, it's so good. There's fish cakes, there's cockles in here. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bit of everything. So I'm gonna get some of the cockles, I'm gonna get some of the fish cake, and I'm gonna try to get some of the noodles. I'm gonna try to get this all in my mouth. Oh man, it is so hot and humid today and I'm sitting here eating a spicy soup and I'm sweating, but you know what, it works. It works and God, really, totally in my happy place right now. Oh, another thing about Singapore, you gotta buy your own napkins. Yeah, they don't provide you napkins. So I had to buy a packet of napkins at the other place I went to for 30 cents. And then another thing is actually how you reserve a table is you put your packet of napkins on the table, and that holds your table. All right, so now for some key tips I think you should know before you go. The weather. The humidity in Singapore is intense. Be prepared to sweat through your clothes and take multiple showers a day. Honestly, after 15 minutes of walking, I was pretty drenched. My tip, wear breathable clothing and catch public transport or a taxi when possible because really, who wants to do laundry on vacation? language known as Asia for beginners, Singapore actually makes it really easy for us Westerners to visit as mostly everyone speaks English. Singapore has four official languages, Malay, Mandarin, Tamil, and English. Money. The official currency in Singapore is the Singaporean dollar. Credit cards are widely accepted, but if you're planning on enjoying the local cuisine, you're going to want to get some cash for the hawker markets. Laws, yep, Singapore is known to be pretty strict, but as long as you mind your manners and don't bring any chewing gum into the country, you'll be fine. Just in case, I've included a link in the description box below. A must do when you come to Singapore is a visit to Gardens by the Bay, a colorful futuristic park that makes you feel like you've stepped into a different world. There are three major areas to see, the Super Tree Grove, Cloud Forest, and Flower Dome. Tickets will run you 65 Singapore dollars for a combo ticket with the Skyway Bridge Walk. You'll definitely want to do this. My hot tip is to come late in the afternoon around 3.30 to check out the Cloud Forest, home to the world's second largest indoor waterfall. The largest is at Changi Airport. Then check out the Flower Dome, the largest greenhouse in the world. You'll instantly feel a temperature drop right when you walk in here. You'll need about an hour and a half to two hours to see both of these spaces depending on how many photos you take. Around 5.30, make your way to the Super Tree Grove to check out 12 of the garden's 18 super trees. Make sure to take a closer look at these trees because they're actually vertical gardens, which is so cool. Once golden hour hits, head up to the Skyway Bridge Walk to get some beautiful panoramic shots and make sure to stay when it gets dark because the trees look equally cool at night.
If you're not feeling like committing over three hours to sightseeing and actually now ready for a cocktail, head to Long Bar at the iconic Raffles Hotel, the birthplace of the famous Singapore Sling. Yes, this place is touristy and you won't find any locals here. And yes, it's on every single travel guide, but you know what? It is fun. I'm traveling with my best friend Farah, and the thing to do here is to order a Singapore sling and to throw peanuts on the floor. Yep, you actually do this in a five-star hotel. Or you can be a little bit more creative and throw peanuts into your best friend's mouth. Word of warning, this cocktail will set you back a hefty 37 Singapore dollars. Good news is, is that they're super strong and that all you'll need to order is one. No trip to Singapore would be complete without ordering Singapore's legendary sticky finger dish, chili crab. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's salty, it's rich, it's delicious. As for where to get it, my pick is Long Beach Seafood, which is famous for their spicier style of sauce. I really like my spice, so I knew I had to come here. It's really hard to come to a seafood restaurant and not want to order everything on the menu, but what you definitely need to order are the razor clams, any sides you want, and of course, the chili crab. But let's elevate your chili crab game and order some manto, which are these fried steamed buns that are used to dip up all that good sauce. Honestly, if you order these at the table, you will impress anyone that you brought out with you to dinner. If you have an extra night in Singapore, my advice is to check out Lao Pasat's Satay Street. In the evenings, the back street of this hawker center closes and becomes a smoky laneway of satay. Visit any one of the 10 street stalls, grab yourself a table, some satay, and wash it all down with a nice cold beer. This night market is open from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. and is honestly my favorite way to eat when traveling. Good morning! This might be your last day in Singapore and I think you should start your day with a traditional Singaporean breakfast. Head to Kalini Kopitam, an old school style coffee shop, and order the Kaya Toast breakfast set with soft boiled eggs and a cup of coffee. So, what is Kaya Toast? Kaya Toast is toasted white bread laced with butter and Kaya, a sweet coconut jam. Do like the locals and add a splash of soy sauce and white pepper to your eggs and dip your bread in it. Oh my god, was this so good! It's like this salty, sweet goodness, and then the eggs as that bit of gooiness and the combination together was unreal. Definitely, do not leave Singapore without trying this. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and exploring Singapore with me. If you got anything out of this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because I have more videos coming your way. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, make sure to follow me on Insta because I do post my travels before they make it to YouTube. Thanks again everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.